let's continue our discussion on demand ordinary goods so what are ordinary goods ordinary goods are those goods for which a decrease in the price of the good leads to an increase in the demand of the goods given goods are those goods for which a decrease in the price of the good leads to a decrease in the demand of the good so if the price of the good is inversely proportional to the demand of the good then we say that it is an ordinary good whereas if the price of the good is directly proportional to the demand of the good then we say that it is a given good now let's look into ordinary goods and given goods diagrammatically so uh, this is the initial budget constraint now the price of the good one decreases now when the price of the good one decreases then the budget constraint will rotate about this point outwards therefore this will be the new budget constraint when the price of the good one decreases now this is the initial bundle that is chosen by the consumer and this is the final bundle that is chosen by the consumer so these two represent optimal choice of the consumer and as you can clearly see the quantity demanded of good one increases so as the price of good one decreases the demand of good one increases and we can say that good one in this case is an ordinary good because the decrease in the price leads to an increase in the demand now let's look into the case of given goods so let this be the initial budget constraint and this be the final budget constraint after the price of good one decreases so again it will be a rotation about this point and it will be a rotation outwards so uh, this is the initial budget cons uh, initial bundle that is chosen by the consumer and this is the final bundle that is chosen by the consumer and as you can see there is a reduction in the demand for good one so as the as there is a decrease in the price of good one it leads to a decrease in the demand for good one and as a result we can say that in this case good one was a given good because a decrease in the price leads to a decrease in the demand of the good now let's look into what price offer curves and demand curves are so what is a price offer curve price offer curve indicates the optimal choice as the price of the good changes so as the price of good one changes what is the change in the optimal consumption can be found out using the price offer curve so basically it will help us to uh, study the effects of price changes and uh, what are its consequences so demand curve can be derived from price of a curve very easily and in a minute we will look into how it can be derived so here is a diagram which will make it very clear how can how we can derive the demand curve from the price of a curve so the upper diagram basically uh, in the upper diagram this is the initial budget constraint represented as b1 this is the second budget constraint this is the third budget constraint now in this case the price is increasing so when the price increases from say p1 price of gold one increases from say p1 to p2 then the budget constraint moves from b1 to b2 and when the price increases further to say p3 then the budget constraint becomes p3 uh, b3 now uh, let's look into the optimal bundles that are chosen by the consumer so this is optimal bundle 1 this is optimal bundle 2 and this is optimal bundle 3 and as you can clearly see the quantity demanded of good one decreases so uh, this represents a case of uh, normal goods i mean ordinary goods why because as there is an increase in the price there is a decrease in the quantity demanded of good one there is an inverse relationship and as a result uh, it represents ordinary goods and not the case of the given good now we are going to derive the demand curve for the ordinary good from the price of a curve so this point corresponds to uh, this point here this point corresponds to this point here and this point corresponds to this point here so this this point this point corresponds to price p1 which is this and this is the quantity demanded this point corresponds to price p2 and this is the quantity demanded and this point corresponds to price p3 and this is the quantity demanded as you can clearly see as the price increases the quantity demand falls and as a result the demand 
curve uh, for ordinary goods in this case is downward sloping. Now we would look into the case of perfect substitutes and perfect complements and we are going to find out the price of a curve and the demand curve for these two extreme special cases. First we will look into the case of perfect complements. So uh, in case of perfect complements we know that the indifference curves they are L shaped. Now this is the budget line. Now uh, the price of good one increases from P1 to P2 and as a result the budget uh, line it rotates inwards and this is the new budget line uh, this is the initial bundle chosen by the consumer this is the final bundle chosen by the consumer and as you can clearly see there is a decrease in the quantity demanded of good one as the price of good one increases therefore there is an inverse relationship between the price of the good one and the uh, demand for good one and as you can see this is the demand curve and as it is a inverse relationship therefore it is downward sloping curve however in case of perfect uh, perfect substitutes it's not as simplistic as it is in the case of perfect complements now let's look into the case of perfect substitutes in detail now in case of perfect substitutes uh, here we are assuming that a person substitutes one unit of good one with one unit of good two as it is a, I, I, that is the ratio in which the good one and good two is substituted is one is to one now what is the slope of the budget line? The slope of the budget line, the absolute value is P1 by P2. Now uh, the shape of the demand curve for the perfect substitutes depends upon P1 and P2. Now uh, we know that if P1 is greater than P2 then the slope of the budget line is greater than 1. And if the slope of the budget line is greater than 1 uh, which is the slope of the indifference curves the slope of indifference curves is one so if the slope of the budget line is greater than the slope of the indifference curves then the quantity demanded of good one will be zero so as you can see here this portion represents p1 greater than p2 and the quantity demanded of good x1 is zero now this point represents p1 equals p2 now when p1 is equal to p2 uh, the quantity demanded of good one increases now uh, we will look into the further portion of the demand curve uh, before that let's look into the price of a curves again now if the p if p1 is less than p2 what's going to happen if p1 is less than p2 the slope of the budget line is going to be less than the uh, slope of the indifference curves and in that case the consumer will only demand good one and there will be no demand for good two and if the consumer demands only good one it means that since per, I mean we are taking the good taken into consideration and ordinary goods, there will be an inverse relationship between the price of the good and the demand of the good. As a result, when this portion, when it represents P1 is less than P2, the demand curve will be like this. It will be an inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demanded of good one. Now uh, we will try and explain this portion of the demand curve when P1 is equal to P2. Now when P1 is equal to P2, what will be the slope of the budget line? It will be 1 which is equal to the slope of the indifference curve. Now when the slope of the budget line is equal to the slope of the indifference curve, it means that the indifference curves and the budget line they are going to overlap. And if the indifference curve and the budget line are going to overlap, it means that there are various infinite number of optimal bundles because if they overlap, they cannot find any one point. All the points of the budget line or the indifference curves will be optimal bundle. And as a result, um, if P1 is equal to P2, the quantity demanded of good one increases until a point where P1 starts becoming less than P2. There, after which uh, the demand curve becomes downward sloping. 